Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. Here we're looking at what is without a doubt the best warm-up technique, certainly that I've encountered. Not only a warm-up trick, but over time should have a really positive impact on your playing, producing noticeable improvements, particularly regarding tension and relaxation, fatigue and effortless playing, the latter of which, let's face it, that's what we're all aiming for. Alright, so I only found out about this a few months back, maybe a, a year at the most, I, I really wish I knew about it sooner. The first player I heard it from was Rick Graham. If you're not familiar with his playing, do yourself a favour and check out his channel. I'll stick a card to it up there. Loads of amazing playing and just great advice on there. If you know his playing style, you're familiar with his work. You'd be well aware of how effortless and smooth his playing looks. The guy has some serious knowledge and just skill and amazing chops on the instrument. And the, the other day I was watching a Kiko Loreo video, currently playing for Megadeth. Another monster player with great technique, again some cool content, you, you can find his channel with the card up there. So uh, both of these guys do this, and this is before you even go to your standard chords, scales, or like whatever exercise you use to warm up. You want to dial in how much pressure you want to use. So you take your fretting hand and hold it above the strings, not even on them, you just don't even touch them at this point, and then just start uh, playing the string, it, and then move the fretting hand slowly towards the fretboard. You'll start to get mute notes and or harmonics like I'm doing here. Then just after that, with a hair more pressure, you'll get the notes sounding out. What you'll likely notice, like I did, is that you don't need to apply half as much pressure as you might have thought or would otherwise do had you not followed this exercise. You might notice as a result that your fretting arm overall just feels kind of more relaxed. This is a good thing. So I repeat this with the remaining fingers. So off the string, Pick the string, move it closer to the S sound. Even now, try lifting your finger up to make sure you're not applying any more force than is totally necessary. So there all I'm doing is lifting this finger a tiny bit off the string. That's not enough. I'm getting the sound there and I'm, I'm barely touching it. Normally I'd be putting a lot more force into this, but here, I'm just putting a tiny bit in. For, for minimal effort as well, I'm not too sure how, how true this is, people who are more scientifically inclined may be able to confirm or deny this, but uh, apparently if you go as close to the fret wire as you can, that's where you need to put the least amount of effort in. As I say, I don't know how true this actually is though. So what's important to remember here is that you're in no rush, take your time to really kind of dial this in and get a feel for it. Switching between the fingers. So for the last two fingers here, you want to do the same thing. Uh, so you want to do this yourself, obviously. I'm doing a very thorough demonstration, so hopefully I've explained the concept very well here. I, I, I don't usually advocate doing spiders because scales, while still they can be used as an exercise, they can also be readily used in a real life context in a much more typically you know, musical way. But for the purposes of this, at least to begin with, I would go with a spider. So you've probably guessed here, I will use each finger in succession. Still not a particularly fast tempo though. And just for good measure, try and play it so they're muted. a tiny bit more pressure. So I maybe not got this finger quite right because I'm kind of slurring this one a bit so maybe I need to make sure, spend an extra minute on that one and get that one kind of dialed in properly. And hopefully your fingers have retained more or less the muscle memory that we've done in the first section so they know roughly what the required pressure is. And I would really spend a little bit of time getting this locked in. It's also worth noting that it's worthwhile doing this with your picking hand as well. See how little force you can use to generate a sound? Now this will only work with certain uh, styles or genres and setups. Yeah, a more compressed sound with gain will generally benefit from this approach. A lower gain ACDC player opting to hit hard and get a full sound using right hand attack. For an example of what I mean, check out that lesson card up there. Or maybe like a gypsy jazz or maybe an acoustic player, or if you're more of a dynamic blues type of guitarist, locking in a weak right hand attack is probably not the best approach. That being said, try some scales, chords, or your favourite exercises like mine and that card up there. Now after a minute or two of this, repeat the initial steps. So play the string, bring your finger in, 
to get that sound just a no more. The reason for doing this is to make sure you're not digging in more than is needed. You just go back to it and make sure you're dialing that in. Now obviously this might take some time to become second nature in your playing, it's still very much a work in progress for myself. The, the main issue I tend to run into is when bending, so if I play a fast run, then bend and then more fast playing, I tend to find it hard to transition back to that kind of light playing after having needed to exert the force uh, for bending the string. Now, lighter strings would help here, but I don't really like the feel of bending 9s compared to 10s. Uh, any suggestions, just fire them in the comments. For me, I found in the past few months that the optimum solution is to go down a half a step with the 10s on, because then there's enough pressure that it doesn't feel like I'm sort of flying off the fretboard, but there's not so much that I have to exert quite as much force in the 10s. But, you know, you need everyone to tune down for that, so it's not <laughs> always a feasible solution. But that was my favourite warm-up tip. This has been Quick Guitar Tricks, that's the playlist there. For more left-hand workouts, check out the Steve Vai Legato lesson. But yeah, if you've enjoyed this, want to stay up to date with new content, hit subscribe, click like. That seems to really help the channel out. Share across social media, leave me a comment and enable notifications by ringing that little bell on the side, if you feel so inclined. Cheers, guys.